Hello again, Bears fans. So glad to be able to talk to you once again in our three and out series here on We Are Regal Radio, in which we dive into the post-game analysis of any Chicago Bears game. And this weekend, it was the Chicago Bears hosting the New York Giants with the Bears narrowly, narrowly, narrowly winning this game 17 to 13. Very similar to week one where it came down to a very dramatic final play of the game and uh, a very realistic opportunity that the Bears were going to lose, but they come away with the victory nonetheless and now move to 2-0 on the young season. So let's uh, let's get into it right away. And Personally, I kind of felt that this game was pretty similar to week one against Detroit, and when I was kind of brainstorming what my three kind of takeaways would be from this, I had a a very similar thought process where once again, the good, the bad, and the ugly of this victory. And so we'll start uh, always with positivity. We'll start with the good. And, uh, you know, the good for me is pretty simple. Once again, Matt Nagy has shown a commitment to the run. Now, you can definitely point to a few areas and a few stretches of time in the game that were, you know, bright spots, optimism, where you could maybe kind of sink your teeth in a little bit. But uh, as I pointed out, that was kind of an inconsistency. And really the only consistent part I felt in this Bears game that was overly positive was the running game. And... You know, it took a while for that run game to get going, but we know the old theory and thought behind running the football. You do it often, you do it early, because then there's a attrition factor where eventually defenses are going to be tired of getting hit and hitting. The run plays start going for four, five yards instead of two and three like they were in the first half. And the Bears found themselves having that same situation happen to them because early on the Giants were up to the challenge of the Bears in stopping the running game. And, you know, all in all, I thought uh, the offensive line, two weeks in a row, another positive, they are they're run blocking with some physicality. I mean, Juan Castillo, the new offensive line coach for the Chicago Bears, I remember hearing or reading an interview this offseason where he discussed what he wanted to bring to this group. And the number one thing he says is the most important thing for all offensive lines is physicality. Coming in with a mentality and executing it on the field, being physical, making sure that defenses and defensive lines feel you and, and really have to understand that when they play the Chicago Bears, it's gonna be a street fight. And that's how it's been these first two weeks. And it doesn't matter exactly what the talent is like on that offensive line because they're not an overly talented group. It doesn't mean that they're bad, but it just, they don't have, you know, two, three offensive linemen that you look at as all pros. You just kind of look at this group as five solid to potentially good offensive linemen. And it's a collection, it's a group, it's a unit. And as a unit, they've been doing a great job I think uh, running the football in these first two games and you look at the final totals rushes they had 32 for 135 yards another very positive week for them David Montgomery 16 attempts on 80 16 attempts 82 yards rushing along of 23 and that long if anyone's forgetting came after the Bears had a chop block which put them back first and 25 then David Montgomery rips off 23 and gets you into second and two so Great stuff from him, and obviously had a touchdown receiving on a great play in that first half. Cordell Patterson added some more, too, with seven attempts on 25 yards rushing. Tariq Cohen, silent for the most part this week, but five attempts, 12 yards rushing. And then Mitch was able to give in a little bit, too, as he normally does, uh, four attempts on 16 yards rushing. Uh, Again, really good day. Really good day committing to the run. Really good day executing it. And if that is going to be the MO of the Bears moving forward, you know, big thumbs up. Because no matter what we talk about with Mitch, uh, we know that there's going to be issues with his ceiling and his floor. At least what he's shown in his career is inconsistency. 
And when you just have a wild card at quarterback, even though this defense has been pretty up and down to begin with, you just look at your running game situation as a way to heal up the defense and help your wild card quarterback. You control the clock, you get ahead of the chains, and that was a common theme in this game. Whenever the Bears were in a second and long or first and 10, the Bears were showing a willingness to keep running the football. A lot of times, Mitch had third and short to go for a first down, and he was able to convert. The Bears were pretty good on third downs overall, 9 of 16. And especially in that first half, they were completely killing it. So that was a, a, another positive effect of having that run game. Without a doubt, that's such an important thing for this Bears team because it was clearly a huge reason to why the Bears were so lackluster a season ago. It's clearly a thing across the league where, you know, everybody is basically running the football to a certain degree. No one is just sitting there throwing it 60 times a game unless you're the Cincinnati Bengals with Joe Burrow, but that's a different subject. You got to run the football. You got to be able to control the clock. You got to be able to give your offenses some easy third down conversions. And especially if you're an offense that can't get a, ch a ton of chunk plays, you got to be able to run the football because you're going to just be in trouble throwing it when you're not really that well equipped. Uh, the one thing I guess we do have to kind of point out, though, with this run game, giving it a bunch of praise, you got to kind of throw a, a wet blanket on it. But this run game, even though they've been pretty solid the first two weeks, has not led to an abundance of points, really. And, and we've seen it with a team like Tennessee. When they run the football a lot and they commit to the run, you know, they're scoring touchdowns. They're not, uh, they're not a team that's just playing – ugly ugly football and even though week one they didn't score a ton of points they also missed a bunch of kicks that would have made their points go up and this past weekend they scored 33 so it's an offense that is completely built on the run but they are doing enough in the pass game and that running game is fueling them to getting touchdowns and that's not something we're seeing out of the bears and that has to sort of change even though they're not a running power football team like Tennessee is, the Bears definitely have opportunities where that play action should be more effective. In the detail series with Peyton Manning, he talked about Mitch Trubisky as being a poor ball faker, and that could be attributing to potentially why the play action isn't quite as lethal. And of course, we know that Mitch still is having inaccuracy issues downfield. So it, it definitely connects and makes sense why the run game isn't doing enough and they don't necessarily have that home run hitting back but you would like to see especially when they get in the red zone maybe more of an emphasis on the run game to get them closer and definitely to continue to keep them ahead of the chains and hopefully Mitch can convert some third and shorts which he was unable to do in that second half and wound up being a contributing reason to why the Giants came back but that is definitely something that Matt Nagy has to continue to work on is how this run game can fuel them in getting more offense and more points. But like I said, we'll take it as a positive for step one. Uh, moving over now to the bad. Unfortunately, got to go with the Bears defense. And this goes from Chuck Pagano all the way down to the players. Felt uh, that this wasn't a bad game from the Bears defense. I mean, we have to keep it real here. The Bears held the Giants to 13 points and they were able to convert a couple takeaways two turnovers from the Giants. That's a good day for a defense. And they kept uh, overall the rush yards of the Giants down to 75. That was uh, a worry area for all Bears fans going into this game because of how poorly the run defense played against Detroit and you keep uh, Daniel Jones even though he was really slinging in that fourth quarter uh, and second half you keep him under 300 yards passing you get to Daniel Jones four times get four sacks even though it didn't feel like a ton of pressure you keep them really honest on third downs they were only three of 13 time of possession was just 25 minutes and probably 
the the only reason why this game was as close as it was, the Bears weren't great on four down conversions where the Giants were three of three. Maybe you get a couple of those. This game has a different feel by the end, but the reason why the Bears, I think, are in this bad spot is just, it just felt like for this game to come down to a final play by Daniel Jones, I mean, had he converted and got that game-winning touchdown, that would be two weeks in a row because Detroit, remember, dropped a game-winning touchdown. It wasn't uh, defended by the Bears. It was dropped by the Lions. And then we saw this week, you know, a couple almost big plays by Eddie Jackson and definitely was able to rebound and be a part of the reason why they were able to stop the Giants on that final play of the game. It just didn't feel quite the same either. When uh, Saquon Barkley goes out, Sterling Shepard goes out, that's two weeks in a row where, like the Lions previously, injuries just really building up for them. This week, the Giants, especially on offense, had the injuries building up to them. Pittsburgh on Monday night seemed like they just dominated that Giants offensive line, and they only had a few days to get ready, a short week to get ready for the Bears. That should have been a huge advantage, you would think, with the Bears' defensive line, especially getting Robert Quinn back. And boy, what an impactful, great play from Robert Quinn, getting that strip sack fumble. Huge point in the game. Too bad the Bears were unable to convert that into a touchdown. But you see the potential that this defense can have rushing the passer. It just hasn't been consistent enough. Uh, From Akeem Hicks, Khalil Mack, Robert Quinn, you would think with those three guys going against a really young, inexperienced offensive line of the Giants, uh, there would be pressures galore, quarterback hits galore, a lot of sacks, and in part that was the case, and maybe in stretches of that game, but certainly not throughout. And the run game, even though it stepped up and played well, uh, you just kind of felt like... There was too many times where the run game could be effective enough for the Giants. And then overall, too, Daniel Jones, I mean, he looked like a great quarterback in that second half. And that's that's that was a little surprising. And he threw one interception. He kind of felt like you could get more. He's a guy that's known to to throw the ball away, but that's usually with pressure. And I come back to Chuck Pagano because it felt like when Daniel Jones in that second half was feeling very comfortable that Chuck maybe should have brought some more blitzes or should have tried to do some things to switch it up because certainly uh, that is the talk with the Giants that in that second half defensively they switched things up against Mitch Trubisky and the Bears offense and it gave them some problems Uh, the Bears really didn't seem to change too much up and even though it worked out fine it just seemed like Daniel Jones was way too comfortable back there. And, and the last thing you want to do against really good teams, especially when you see uh, coming up soon guys like Tom Brady, you're going to have Matt Ryan this weekend. You know, good quarterbacks are going to be able to pick you apart if they feel comfortable back there. And the Bears have way too much talent to not be good at rushing the passer. And also, too, uh, in that run defense that I talked about earlier, on a fourth and one, Deion Lewis goes right up the gut and scores a touchdown late in that fourth quarter. That was a little bit shocking. I mean, rarely do we see the the Bears get bullied when you go big versus big, and especially, again, you look at the guys that they have. They've got some really big, talented guys. It's surprising that a young Giants team, an offensive line, could just come in and and really start imposing their will in that second half. And definitely an area where Chuck Pagano and the rest of the team have to figure it out for sure. So one last takeaway to go, which unfortunately is, I think, the worst of the takeaways and and definitely the area of most concern. And it, it's going to sound a little general, but it's been the common theme so far for this Bears team in 2020. And I guess you can basically say, aside from the defense in 2018, it's been the theme of Matt Nagy's Bears, and that's inconsistency. And that is my ugly for this game because we got to bring it back out, take a, a macro look at this for the Bears. Coming into this year, it's no shock that the Bears are 2 0. I think it was pretty universally believed that the Bears no matter what they have at quarterback, would have a tremendous opportunity to go 2-0 because 
with their defense and the talent that they have, they're just better than the Giants and the Lions. Now, of course, some people thought the Lions might be one of those worst to first situations, sure. But overall, no one was expecting the Lions to dominate the Bears, and the Bears would be very much alive in both of these games and probably should win both of these games and probably would be favored in both of these games, and that has been the case. Therefore, when you see the type of brilliance from Mitch Trubisky in that fourth quarter against the Lions, and of course it wasn't all perfect. He almost made a huge mistake in that one with the the fumble that would have cost them the game. But just focusing right now on, on the prop, which is he played I mean the Bears don't win that game without Mitch Trubisky's heroics in that fourth quarter period end of story you don't win that game unless Mitch is great in the fourth quarter and then in this first half you see Mitch he plays pretty well overall I mean a opening drive touchdown that's that's certainly a rarity uh, it was really unfortunate they couldn't take advantage of the Giants fumble after the Robert Quinn strip sack but That's certainly not on Mitch. I mean, he threw an absolute dime to Anthony Miller, and for whatever reason, Anthony Miller just couldn't haul it in, and it was perfectly in the spot where it needed to be, where only Anthony Miller could make a play on it. And, of course, he had to dive, and maybe people are going to rip Mitch for not the absolute perfectest of throws in that situation. But, I mean, come on. That's If uh, Patrick Mahomes made that throw and Anthony Miller – drop that no one would even bat an eye at Patrick Mahomes for any negativity towards that throw it it was a perfect throw and then you look at uh, you know that that play with Darnell Mooney you know really great throw with him creating just sitting in the pocket moving around buying time and and just put a perfect ball up for Mooney to get and we saw him hit Allen Robinson multiple times. It, it was it was very nice to see. It was very encouraging stuff to see. And then when he capped it off uh, in that first drive with David Montgomery, you know, just baits the defender to come take away the run, throws it just nice and soft over the top to David Montgomery. I mean, great stuff, great stuff from Mitch and and obviously the the David Montgomery run after the catch. And then you get to the second half and. You know, it wasn't terrible. Certainly Mitch wasn't helped out again by a few guys like Anthony Miller dropping a huge third down late in that game where it just seemed like Mitch put the ball where it needed to be. And, you know, a little inaccurate at times downfield, had Demetrius Harris on a big play that just overthrew him. But that happens to the best of them. It's not always going to be perfect. And certainly it sounds like I'm making excuses for Mitch, and that's not the case here. But... Then you started to see the struggles. And I would say both of those interceptions wasn't a big fan of what he was trying to do on either of those plays. Seemed like he was really trying to force it in on that first interception and justifiably got intercepted. Mitch still has a lot of work to do when it comes to reading the entirety of the field. Thought he saw something, maybe favored it because of Allen Robinson. Has a lot of trust in him, but you have to make sure that Allen Robinson is actually open and not being baited by James Bradbury, which he was. And then I was a little surprised Mitch went back to Allen Robinson. Now, of course, not the same kind of bad decision. It was one-on-one, threw it up to him. Wasn't maybe the best of balls, but I was surprised Allen Robinson had that thing ripped away from him. And Bradbury just made an amazing play. Sometimes that happens, you know. I'm sure we can look back at – some of Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson's interceptions and just think, man, you know, the defender just made a heck of a play. And sometimes that happens. But the fact that Mitch just couldn't really dominate this game against this bad of an opponent where he had a lot of drives, a lot of chances, the Giants didn't really get going until that third quarter, late in the third quarter, certainly in the fourth quarter. So all the opportunity in the world to just take control of that football game and He was just unable to do it, and and part of me feels like, you know, you bring in a consistent quarterback, not saying one of the best, but, you know, let's say top 16 in the league, a consistent good quarterback like the Bears are going to see this week in Matt Ryan. A consistent quarterback finds a way to make that a laugher by the fourth quarter. Too bad the Bears weren't unable to do so. We, of course, talked about the defense and their uh, inconsistencies. I thought of last week that the Bears were the Detroit Lions and the Giants were the Chicago Bears. 
the Giants really were allowed to hang in that game. Finally got a couple breaks, started feeling confident, started feeling motivated, and they were able to turn it up a notch. And the Bears were just never able to match that intensity. And certainly down the line, and it's going to be a great test this week against the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons uh, are going to are a team that scores points. They're a team that gives up points. So the offense is going to have to bring it against this Falcons defense and get in that mindset right now. We got to put up 30 at least. And this Bears defense has to get in the mindset where we're not playing the Giants. We're not playing the Lions. This is an offense that is going to eat us alive if we play the type of defense we've been playing so far in the first two weeks. So coaching has been solid. I definitely think that they can get better, though, on all fronts. It's another week where the Bears have plenty of film to break down and they can get some positives out of this and we'll have a lot of things to work on in the practice field. The only fear that I have with that is the Bears definitely did some work on areas that they really struggled against the Lions. For example, third down, they were dreadful. This week, they were pretty good. Corrected some issues. They really did. They stayed ahead of the chains, you know, defensively more pressure, yada, yada, yada. But then we saw other problems. Other problems occur. You know, Mitch Trubisky's inconsistency now in the second half. You know, the Giants make some adjustments. He's un- unable to adjust back. The defense, they have their foot on the pedal, and then they let it off. And even though they were good enough to rely on their skill and the lack of skill from the Giants and the injuries of the Giants' offense to get by, that's not going to work against a team like Atlanta when you got Calvin Ridley, you've got Julio Jones, Todd Gurley is playing pretty solidly, and Matt Ryan, we know. Any week, he can go up against the best and come away a winner. That's how talented he can play. And I think of last season when he went into San Francisco late in the year and got a big-time impressive victory for his Falcon squad. So he's not going to be intimidated by this Bears defense. If the Bears don't figure out a way to end their inconsistency woes, it's certainly going to be a long day in Atlanta. But no doubt about it, this Bears team can hit another level and maybe become one of the best teams in the NFC if they can figure out a way to eliminate their inconsistency.